What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your daily creative reading for uh, November 24th. Let's hop right in and see where this takes us, okay? And then uh, in the link in the, you'll see in the description below the timestamp for where uh, Cancer's reading starts. So let's, let us away. Ooh, let us away for really, for real. Um, some, some hoppers. So Mercury and debilitated and discomfort. Ooh, this is almost coming across as Seven of Cups energy here. Mercury. So messages and discomfort. I almost feel like you're seeing... This is almost coming across as Pluto. It's not. It's a Mercury card. This is Mercury. But what came across as Pluto? So it could be even Chiron, I'm feeling. Um, so I'm, I almost feel like there's certain things that you're seeing that may not feel the best. Like it might feel really uncomfortable, but it's part of the process of what you're experiencing and where you're headed. So it's really important that you pay attention. First house arrival. Yeah, yeah. So that's like, it's like getting there. Um, and I think first house is also about the I, me, my. Uh, and then 12th house and introspection. Um, so I think this is uh, a lot about, that's a lot of Piscean energy, but I feel like there's something that you're coming, it's like your awareness is expanding. These are a lot of houses. So it could be where Mercury sits in your chart. It's creating some discomfort um, because you're seeing something either about yourself or spirit is communicating something about the time that we're in. I think Mercury at the time of this reading is in the sun, like the sun is in Mercury. Um, but it, and I think, um, Mm. there's something that feels off I'm getting like it's just it feels off this discomfort it's like there's something about what's going on inside of you where something might feel off like it doesn't and it's hard to put your finger on it's hard to put your finger on because you can't see it completely clearly you know the 12th house is about illusion but it's also that introspection is the other side of that so i think there's opportunities where you wherever you feel uncomfortable it's an invitation to dive deeper and to explore a little bit internally because there's a compass that you have inside of you that is that spirit is gracing you with uh through discernment that might be something too The call to adventure is the page of swords. So I feel like this to me comes across as the, um, I know that a lot of the pages, especially the page of wands too, can be like a writer energy, but this is like a creative energy um, that is something very, it feels very logical. There's something very logic oriented. Um, I'm hearing easy breezy. It may feel that way, page of swords. It's more learner to me. This is more learner. Like you're maybe you're getting your learner's permit for something. Um, or you could be in school. There could be studies that you're undertaking, assignments that you're completing. And through them, maybe you're seeing, this could also be cosmic assignments as well, like a student of the universe type idea. Um, <laughs> a student of the universe and the world popped out. I think that's part of the refusal. Maybe you feel like there's something that's bigger than you. Um, and it's kind of freezing you in your tracks. It might be freezing you in your tracks a little bit because I almost see like deer in a headlights and, and that's possibly this first house arrival, like deer in a headlight. And that might be the discomfort is where something is, there's a spotlight being shone and it could mean that there's something like this could mean the world stage, like you could be um, experiencing that feeling, but it's also eclipse related given the Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius and Leo energy here. There could be cycles that you're ending or things that are coming to, I mean, I feel like the page of swords is also a messenger energy. So it could be messages, um, messages from a distance, um, that are sort of helping you to engage in energy differently. Um, it could also just be someone reaching out that brings something back into balance at its most basic, right? Outside of daily creative stuff. Like it could be just like clearing the air a little bit with the easy breezy. Like there could be a way that there's um, people are reaching out 444 on the time. Uh, could be angelically related, specifically with Archangel Michael. Um, but there's just something coming back into balance here. 
And I feel like it might be you. Like it could be you in this crisp, fresh energy where you're just excited again. Because, um, you know, I feel like what could become a tower if it goes unchecked is overgiving, right? This was on the bottom and this is what came out in terms of the energy of the tower. Uh, things that could become a tower if it goes unchecked. And like, I feel a bit like this eight of pentacles energy is overworking, right? It's putting too much effort in and understanding the difference between enjoying what you do and finding your passion and something that lights you up on a, in a big way that propels you forward through these different portals and energy that takes you back into something because you're in a space of um, imbalance because you're in a space of overgiving. Yeah, that's the six, yeah, that's six of pentacles on the bottom and you see it. I feel like this is part of a long-standing pattern with the devil card, the king of swords. You're seeing it really clearly and you're prepared to cut out what isn't working for you in terms of uh, your own behaviors and habits. And that really helps to make way for the new. And that's like, this is your protagonist energy. Um, I feel like that's your best asset is your mind right now to see things quite clearly because that unlocks opportunities that connect to something more passionate for you, right? The page of swords, this could be like just a little message that you get. Uh, it could be a download. It could be spirit talking to you as well. High priestess is your antagonist energy. If you disconnect from this, if you disconnect from your intuition right now, um, <laughs> it's... Seems so general a message. Stay connected to your intuition. Well, okie dokie, right? But this, it's what the way that it's coming across is more so that if you prioritize logic too much, right? These are, this is like, I'm seeing this as a reading about extremes where it's like, that's the discomfort. I think that that discomfort energy in the oracles at the beginning is like, when you go to one place only and you then you fly over to the other side because it feels uncomfortable, there's like a balance, right? There's a balance that you're coming into. And part of the illusion here is that there's one or the other. It's not an either or proposition for what you're going through. If this is about a relationship, it could be that there's not either one way or the other. It's that there's this balance and this texture of things in between. And the liminal space in between is where the creative ideas are going to come from. But there's working through the discomfort. Like there's something that's really fixed. It could be a fixed mindset. It could be for some people, uh, if you're uh, older, specifically in Canada, um, we have pensions. So if you're on a fixed income of any kind, um, you know, or for folks who are on uh, disability or things like that, uh, getting disability credits and, and whatnot, like those, those are fixed income. You could feel like your life is fixed. Like I'm seeing something that's like too fixed and it could be a mindset with the page of swords here. But the, the reason why, it's almost like the discomfort is coming from the balance. Like there's something that feels more comfortable about what you know than what's new. And that's where you have to lean into it because it might not feel uh, so easy breezy at first. But nor does the discomfort that you're working with right now. Mm-hmm. And I think the devil energy here is showing up as like illusions that you've internalized, perhaps about success, perhaps about whether you have what it takes. Things that might take you off your path. But like your path isn't a thing that's, you know, like your path is everywhere all the time because you are and period like I you are the I am right. You are God. So when that happens, your path isn't something outside of you. Your path is exactly where you're meant to be. So, because life isn't unfolding according to some outside person or source, you are the source, you are the wellspring, right? And when we get that confused, we can then believe we can fix our focus on external circumstances, people, energies, things, and believe that it's outside of us, but it's within you. It's, it's you, you, you are God, right? That's the energy. Your heart center is beautiful. It's opening. It's open. Um, but it's like, that's where, when you're unaware, when you don't know, but you know, but you don't know, that, I feel like it's like, that's pulling back the curtains on, like, you know, you can put in work and develop a craft all you want, right? This is a card of craftspersonship. 
Um, you know, and, and I think that when you get into that place, it can become a tower because you believe more in the craft than in the source of light within you, which works through whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing. And I think that the devil energy here may be not paying attention to the noise, right? The noise just in the sense of, um, you know, who will benefit from this gift and who will do this and that. And it's like, because then you can believe that the gift is God when you are God. And that's where you can displace the energy completely. You know, that's where you can displace the energy and yourself at the same time. The main challenge is the magician. Yeah. You, it, the main challenge is believing that you can do it. The main challenge is believing that it is possible for you. that you have the tools. Maybe you've been focused more on money, pentacles. Maybe you've been focused so much on money that you forget how well equipped you are to handle the stuff of your dreams because you're so used to working with one tool in particular that when it comes to the others, the challenge is seeing that you are equipped, right? Because we have pentacles here. We also have the swords and we have the wands. And then the only thing that's missing is your heart. And I was wondering, I'm like, why is the heart so powerful in this? When I said your heart is open. And I think it's because the cup energy is, is inherent in the temperance energy here of Sagittarius, where it is uh, the alchemization um, and the integration energy. So I think the magician card here is profound because I think you've been focused maybe too much on one side of things. Queen of Cups, there's the energy of the emotions. What matters the most to you? What have you been neglecting about your self-care? What have you been neglecting about, you know, what, it's not just about what fires you up. It's about what gives life meaning, right? Because we can wake up in the morning and be so excited for what, where we're headed and what is around us. But we can be so disconnected from our emotions because we look for the excitement. You know, as someone with ADHD, I often have to temper my, um, the, just where dopamine comes from, right? Because I know that with ADHD, it's sort of an intermittent creation of it. So if it's low, then it will be dopamine seeking behaviors, um, to create that sort of like hit for my brain. Um, and you know, I think that that can almost become a way that we start to operate in relation to um, confidence and, and other things. Like I see it so much in other people, right? And seeing those patterns. So what are we waking up to here, Spirit? What are What's my daily creatives and my Cancerian collective waking up to? <laughs> Whatever is dead, done, and over with. It's such a study in opposition, this energy, you know? Um, whatever is ending is part of these new beginnings, these seeds, whatever it is that you've gone through is not without purpose. But the other thing to keep in mind too, is that this is, this is an energy of planting seeds for your future. So what you thought was the future that ended, or when you see something that shifts and turns and twists, it's like this energy here is, it, it's not about taking you off the path. It's not about the ending. It's about the other, it's almost like, a, I, I think of endings as achievements. Um, at least it's coming through in this energy where it's like the ending is the achievement here. The ending is the seed of one of 10 or many more uh, pentacles that you're planting. And I think that what you're, what this is allowing you to, the, like the main lesson here, this is facilitating this beautiful way that you're beginning to offer yourself or be receptive to offers. Could be of love, but I think this could just be heartfelt offers. It could also be that you're forgiving someone. You could have thrown yourself into work because you were trying to ignore. And you know, when you're unaware of your own skills, when you're unaware of your own ability because of everything that you have at your disposal energetically and within you, you can turn away from your emotions you can turn away from your emotions because you don't trust them as much, right? And I think the overcoming is getting back in touch with your emotions. So if this is somebody that you have to forgive, I think spirit is encouraging you to do that. I see the Knight of Cups is coming across as forgiveness. Um, perhaps someone seeking forgiveness and you're coming at things as the page. And it doesn't necessarily mean that forgiveness is being offered like someone is seeking that there could be a sincere apology that someone's offering but i also feel like perhaps the energy here is of you being in this place of of i want to say learning your limits learning your limits but not in a way that is limited or limitation it's not in that sense this is far more an energy of um integrating something emotionally like if this is this if this is working through trauma i almost feel like this is also you um having experienced things 
that we're like, you know, that's, well, that sounds so pejorative, but you know, as someone who, who, who falls under the banner of CPTSD, this can be, it's like, that's how trauma can come across sometimes as being in the extremes. So it's either or, right? You don't get the benefit of, of anything else or being anywhere else. So it's like, you have to be in, there's like a before and an after, right? And there, it's hard to conceive of the in-between, the, the, the before and the after, right? That's the order it's coming through, not before and after, before and after. And it's hard to conceive of life in between that because we see things sometimes as, you know, what happened that was awful and the good life after it. But the in between is where all this healing takes place. So I could be speaking to that and the way that it's opening you up creatively because you're seeing that you don't have to throw yourself into a thing. What you do, your craft and you have to love your craft, right? I think about, uh, I was talking to folks recently about the Notre Dame Cathedral in France and how so much of the crafts, the, the craft that went into the stonework and all of it, it's like that is an art that is lost now to an extent, right? To an extent. Um, and I think that... Um, I'm hearing buzzing, like a bee... Um, like a bee or it's not a hummingbird, but maybe a hummingbird, um, large bees. I, <laughs> I saw a meme one meme once that said that large bees often sound like little dirt bikes flying through the air. Um, so it could be, there's something about a hive or there's a way that you've been contributing and you're just like a worker bee, right? You're just like a worker bee. Um, but maybe it's like, what if you woke up one day and realized that you're not a bee, but that you're actually a butterfly or you're not a bee, but that you're actually like, you know, a swan. What if you wake up one day and realize that the hive that you've placed yourself within, right? And it's almost like seeing your way out of the hive, the overwork, the overgiving is the discomfort. But there's something about putting yourself first that's going to help you integrate and break through some illusions here. Twelfth house about your energies and where they've been going and that's where it's like this exploration i feel like this is also an invitation to explore it could be some travel with the world here um and the sagittarian energy showing up kind of twice in the ninth house and sagittarius um so i think that you could be looking at it could be like small trips that bring you back to yourself or it could be these like little road trips or or you know going places that going places i mean going places that even within, it could be road trips within, inner road trips, right? I don't know why I'm shuffling again. I'm going to pull one more card here. The nine of wands. I think that showed up yesterday. Um, yeah. There's something you've been carrying. It's not just about letting go of it because like it's sometimes we say like you gotta let go come back into balance Brr. and that's so true but it's like it's not a charge through it's opening a door that we we closed very tightly shut within ourselves and this could be forgiveness this could be opportunity uh with the page of swords opportunities to do that right opportunities aren't just about you know black friday sales or like it's not just about those things um it's not just about courses. It's not just about, you know, all these different things. Opportunities also present themselves to forgive. Opportunities to know yourself more deeply and to sink into who that is, right? Um, opportunities to allow yourself the freedom to know you outside of the context of whatever your before and after was, right? I know I've been through experiences where there was a before that thing happened and then afterwards to the point where I had someone say, you know, you just seem so different now. And that's kind of the point, right? That's kind of the point. Trauma isn't, you can't go back to who you were before that happened. And this isn't even just relative to trauma. Sometimes it's just things that hurt. Sometimes it's things that hurt and that's enough. That's it, right? Um, so I think it's, I think there's something about that process here and, and forgiving yourself especially with this queen of cups on the magician, forgiving yourself perhaps for seeing how much you had available to you and how capable you were. Maybe you doubted that. Maybe you doubted that. I think this is about forgiving yourself. And I feel like this knight of cups is perhaps opportunities to forgive coming to you, right? Um, I'm hearing once in a blue moon and it could be once in a blue moon. Like this could be um, what you thought was a once in, the, once in a blue moon healing 
that could not happen is now happening or is being welcomed in. Um, I'm going to pull a message for uh, from Mike Dooley's deck just to close out the reading for the day for this daily creative reading. Do something new, do something different. And that's what breaking patterns is about, right? It, there might be discomfort because you're like, where am I? I don't know. I Where is the you are here map in this big ass building that I'm in, right? But you're coming to a place where it's not about what others communicate with you. This is about doing something new. And that can feel really unfamiliar. It's a new landscape, right? It's a new landscape. But that's where you understand more of your power and what you're capable of. That's where you understand more of your power because you can see, yeah, start where you are. You know, you're looking for the you are here, the little pin on a map. But the, the message isn't you are here. The message is start where you are. It's, it's, that's the thing, right? That's start where you are. You don't have to look for where you are because where you are is here. And here is enough because you are. Because you are the I am. And that contains everything. That's not just the after, but that's the ether in between. Yeah, look at that. Forgive. Wow. Spirit, thank you so much. Ooh, I just got goosebumps. Whoa. Um, so you were born with that it quality. Give yourself much more credit. You know what I'm getting on this? This is so interesting. Thank you, spirit. Maybe there's something about you that you put into the world that you felt made you a target for something. Maybe that's where this before and after, whatever this before and after is. Like you, you could have a giving nature. You could, you know, there could be a way that you are in the world that you felt, you know, brought this situation to you and that you were the cause of it quietly. Even if you don't tell other people that. You just quietly assumed that about yourself. And that's where you have to forgive yourself, this Queen of Cups energy. And you have to give yourself more credit. You have to give yourself more credit because you did not draw that situation to you. You were not harmed because you're you. You were harmed because someone did harm. I don't know if people have told you that. Um, it's something I definitely had to work through and it's hard because there's like a mountain inside of us that we have to climb to get to that point. And the peak isn't about winning anything. The peak is just about seeing everything as it actually was. And and I think too, that is an accurate reflection of yourself. And, and maybe you need to let yourself off the hook. You have to give yourself more credit. Wow. How would love see you? How does spirit see you as anything other than forgiven? Wow, I just need to sit with that for a second. Because this energy is really powerful. It is so powerful. Um, and I just hope that you take it in like this, you know. Wow. Okay. Whew, that's beautiful. Thank you, Spirit. It's stuff like this where it's like I feel so humbled and grateful to be a channel for Spirit in this way. Um, okay, so 20. Uh, okay, so Cancer, your reading starts right now. Um... Now, let's pull from Stephen Farmer's back here. I feel like I'm just, like, I feel like I'm on hallowed ground right now. Like, if I, I would feel compelled to take my shoes off and stand on that ground, that earth, that solid place, to behold what feels like a process of forgiveness. That, that like, maybe it took past lives. I'm hearing past lives. It could be something that you've carried with you for a very long time. And this page of swords and the knight of cups, I know I read it in the daily creative reading as like an opportunity for healing or an opportunity for forgiveness, but maybe these are opportunities for healing. 
and you're seeing an opportunity to do something new so that you don't have to keep repeating, right? Because just because repetition makes something familiar, so we can cling to it, but repetition also is repetition. Is it for the sake of itself or is it repetition because it's something you want? Is it repetition because it's something that you desire? Like what, what's the purpose of that? Love and compassion. I feel like you're extending so much more of this to yourself, Cancer. Yeah, there could have been like a tower moment, tsunami and wake up call and rain. These are two different ways that water works, right? Like this is before. This could have been the before where something came crashing in and the rain is the after and the purification. And I feel like it's, a, and again, water energy. It could be something with Scorpio season that you released and let go of. Volcano and volatility. Yeah. You And you know, this is almost coming across as like walking on eggshells right? Walking on eggshells with yourself or, you know, with trauma that you carry. It could also just be things that you haven't forgiven, have left you feeling like you're walking on eggshells in life because you feel like it could happen again. So it, when things stay active in us and, and we can be in a dysregulated place and not even realize it because we are so disembodied and pushed away from our body that we don't see, we don't see how walking on eggshells really closes our, our aura and like it collapses it instead of expanding it and, and allowing us to be in this healthier energy. Wind and activation. What's funny is that it showed up on the bottom of the deck before I shuffled and then I shuffled and you just saw that and that showed up again because I was thinking there's something about activation here with the easy breezy that was in the... Um, that was in the, the daily creative reading before this one, like just now. And I feel like there's something that's being activated in you. Wow, remember I said past life? This is, wow, this is really intense. Some hermit energy, completion. Wow, okay, I just, this is beautiful. Thank you so much, Spirit. I feel like I'm peeking into a story where there's something that's held you back, but it's been so embedded because I feel like it's almost like at a DNA level that you can't see. Like there's something epigenetically buried that was like a trigger and a trigger and a trigger and a trigger. And every time the wind blew, like a wind of change, perhaps there was something even with this page of swords, like being in a new, like a learner's position. And, and it's like, it, it activated this, this thing and it's like active again, but it's like, you're doing something different and you're going within island and solitude. You're going within to that sense of peace. That's what's bringing things to a sense of completion with this full moon. It could be the next full moon. But what I'm understanding is the Sagittarian new moon that just passed, uh, I think just passed, um, or that's upcoming. Um, yeah, it's like around this time. It could be the Sagittarian new moon and then the, the Sagittarius full moon at the beginning of the summer amidst these things and this expansion, right? This ninth house exploration. So I feel like there's this part of you that's like you were traversing a new landscape and that was part of the expansion, but you can let it go. Like there's this completion with this new moon energy where it's like you can fully let it go. And that's where this new is coming in. There's something new coming in. And this is also your, a bit of your energy cancer, right? So there could be something that you, there, that you couldn't see that, that's coming to a completion that's allowing you to emerge fully dragonfly metamorphosis, right? It could be allowing you to emerge completely and fully. And it's safe to be grateful for that. It's safe to be grateful, but it's not a necessity because spirit's going to do its thing anyway. So there aren't conditions or caveats on this good. There's not caveats or conditions on this completion and this ending and this new beginning, right? When we think in terms of um, you know, the before and the after, especially when it comes to trauma, we can see the, you know, the before it happened and then the after and the liminality gets eaten up by these conditions that we place on our good because we try to construct a situation of safety so that we sidestep and, you know, sometimes bypass, right? We bypass at times out of necessity because your brain is so overwhelmed that it looks for the lesser options. And that's an act of radical compassion for yourself that your brain is protecting you from those things. Um, 
but it's like there's this it's like releasing the idea that if you're not grateful bad things will happen be grateful because it just feels good be grateful because it's it's you're giving to yourself when you do that you're opening up the in-between so that it's not just a before and an after. It's the in-between that can be so rich. And you're not looking for ways to protect yourself from the in-between because you need to get to the finish line to protect yourself and save yourself so that you don't have to encounter what happened before. There's like this release that's taking place where you're seeing forgiveness not as something that is the outcome that's ideal. It's just part of what you, who you are now. Part of who you are now. Okay, I'm going to pull from the creativity deck here. Spirit, what messages do you have for cancer, please? This is a truly beautiful reading, and I feel so grateful to be seeing it. Yeah, projections. And this, again, this can relate to, this is like, it's coming across as a lot of healing of trauma, cancer. And I don't know if, like, I if, so I'm not, I'm an expert on trauma to the extent that I can talk about my own experiences with it. Um and I, I'm not medically trained or anything along those lines. So if you're reading through or if you're watching this and you're finding yourself triggered or there are things coming up, um, don't deny yourself the beauty of help. It's someone to talk to through it, right? Um, but I feel like this projections energy, uh, so seven of cups, right? Remember how I talked about how this reminded me of the seven of cups? And it's like maybe this projections card is where you're seeing the trauma pro projected and it's leaving you feeling like you don't know where you are. And it couldn't, it maybe isn't even trauma. It could just be hurt, like deep hurt that you, you've been hanging on to, right? Or a sense of yourself that you're clinging to, to protect you from what happened or something that happened before. And it's like, I'm seeing this discomfort because you don't know where you are. It's almost like a hall of mirrors that's coming across here in terms of reflections on the water, because there are so many reflections in the seven of cups, right? That it's difficult to get a sense of that. And you're not being called to know exactly where you need to go. You're no, you're being called to know exactly where you are. And that's how you come back into a very practical pentacular, uh, pentacular balance. You come back into balance in that way. Spirit's taking care of the temperance balance, but you need to balance in the everyday where that's your task is just to be settled into the everyday yeah there's the breakthrough breakthrough and three of wands experiencing i feel like the breakthrough this is also it's so i'm getting a couple things like that volcano and volatility the breakthrough is that you stop walking on eggshells and release yourself from the cage that you've placed around yourself while doing that and this experiencing you're starting to feel safe experiencing life again um not through a specific channel not through a thing but in the present moment and that's really it's sort of this transformation where you're reaching that place of um being there again and it feels safe to you finally i'm hearing finally especially i was looking at the nine of wands and hearing finally safe transformation yeah exactly that's i feel like that's really strongly coming through here integration as well and adventure isn't this so beautiful okay i really love that it's like this and then you get integration okay and then it's like a return to this childlike state of wonder adventure. That's the Knight of Pentacles. Or sorry, the Page of, Page of Pentacles, I think. Yeah, Page of Pentacles. So this is a sense of childlike wonder in what you're doing and where you are. And I feel like it opens up something really profound. And that's how the wheel turns. And now I'm hearing turn, turn, turn by the birds. So it's like you're there's something that you're allowing to shift and change. And that's how change happens. And it's like you're emerging you're emerging from this place within. It's like you put a cage around your heart, three, 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 three on the time. And now you're you're releasing these things, Cancer. It could be that you're, it, you know, this could also just represent healing after a breakup. Um, but again, the point isn't to go, where am I? The point is to say that I am, not where am I? Because then it assumes that yourself is outside of you. So it's like the quality of the question that you ask. You're outside of yourself. So you can't be I am. You cannot be that because you don't know where you are. And you are associating the I am with certainty about where you are. So you cannot know one. So you disconnect yourself discursively and energetically from you, from your higher self and source. Not just because you say it, but because in a sense, when you doubt where you are and any imperfection, or you feel discord about where you are, you know, and that's where we can be in the in-between because we create this mental picture, especially again, I relate it to trauma and you see where you were 
and where you want to be and you forget that where you are is here so you create these two places the almost like these two islands mentally that have nothing to do with one another other than the fact that this did not feel safe and this is some projected safety that you create so then you cling to that you cling to that when you're being called to be in the in-between more right that's a projection when we put that forward like that and i think that you're ceasing to walk on eggshells in your life because there's something about what happened recently it could be um winds of change specifically because change is here right and it's change coming in a way that doesn't activate you it's change coming in a way that is part of your destiny it's change coming in a way that can be destiny too right it can be destined where you release and things shift and move and and it all comes together so beautifully for you yeah damn this was like a lot of releasing for you cancer um mm -hmm. wow it's readings like this, again, it just, I feel really humbled um, to behold this. Because I feel like I'm seeing someone's very tender places. I let the universe catch up with my dreams. Yeah. And it's also understanding that spirit's working on your behalf too. Because when you cling to upset and anger with other people... When you cling to that and identify with it, you kind of get in your own way because you block spirit because there's a pathway that spirit might take through a wound or through hurt. And it's like the road is, it's like it's, it's closed. There's a road in your heart that's closed that spirit can't take. Feel my way into faith one step at a time. Yeah. I choose love no matter what. And sometimes choosing love is not about choosing romance. Sometimes it is. But other times it's about choosing forgiveness. And other times it's about choosing release. Other times it's about choosing yourself. Yeah. I'm just going to write that down because I just, I'm feeling like the before and after is so significant here for you, Cancer. The before and after. Yeah. All right. That is it, Cancer, though. I'm going to leave it here. If this resonated, please give it a like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel if you're not here already. Uh, if you are joining me for my subscriber base, thank you so much. I really appreciate you and the fact that you're here. So thank you so much for that. Um, and as always, I hope that wherever this finds you on the time-space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, it finds you very, very well taking care of yourself, healing, and, t and, and really tending to that absolutely beautiful heart. Because that's really what's coming through here is a healed and healing heart. So... Thank you so much, Cancer, and my daily creatives, if you're still watching. So thank you. Have a wonderful day.